Welcome to Ask the Expert with noted radio host Steve Sleeper. Each week, Steve interviews entrepreneurs and professionals and shares their intriguing stories of success and service. Now, here's radio veteran Steve Sleeper. Our guest today is Birmingham, Alabama bankruptcy attorney James Seal. Whether you're under lawsuits, garnishments, threat of foreclosure, struggling with credit card debt, or just needing to get your finances straight, Attorney Seal can help. I started the interview by asking James to tell us about himself and his firm. Our firm is Seal Hansen LLC, which was me and my law partner for about uh, 10 years. Uh, who just was elected to the Alabama Court of Civil Appeals this past November. The name remains Seal Hansen. I've been doing this uh, for 15 years um, in bankruptcy practice. Um, My practice is pretty much limited to um, consumer and business bankruptcies, Chapter 7s, Chapter 13s. Married, I have two kids. What is bankruptcy? Yeah, so I guess in its simplest terms, bankruptcy is a, uh, just a, it's a federal law um, that has, you know, you have exemptions and things that are state specific, but primarily bankruptcy is federal, federal law that allows individuals and businesses uh, opportunity through the various chapters of bankruptcy to either eliminate debt entirely uh, or reorganize it in some way to pay it back. I teach bankruptcy at uh, Birmingham School of Law, and one of the things I tell my my class is that bankruptcy is very interesting because it's one of the one of the things actually provided for in the U.S. Constitution. The framers uh, mentioned bankruptcy in Article One, Section Eight, and gives Congress the power to establish uniform laws on on bankruptcy. Um, they're always kind of you know are surprised that that it's specifically mentioned in the Constitution. So you know it is a fundamental um, right that we have to, to be able to, you know, protect ourselves under the, the laws that Congress establishes on bankruptcy. Um, you know, being the, the, the most recent uh, bankruptcy law uh, in 2005 made sweeping changes to, to the bankruptcy code, but it is currently, you know, 15 years later, it's still uh, the bankruptcy law would, which we practice under. What are the different types of bankruptcy? Well, Chapter 7 is um, primarily what we refer, or what the code refers to as total liquidation. Uh, It's essentially just uh, a scenario available to consumers and businesses to essentially just liquidate any assets that they may have and discharge, meaning just get rid of uh, unsecured debt. Chapter 13 I tell clients and and people that mainly can refer to chapter 13 or think about chapter 13 is just basically debt consolidation or reorganization. You may be able to discharge some unsecured debt depending upon how much you can afford monthly. It's only available to individuals. What is the process for filing for bankruptcy and, and, and why do I need a lawyer to do that? Well, you know, the, the, the process of filing a bankruptcy being that it's federal, uh, it's kind of like anything else. It's federal. There's standardized forms that exist for it. Um, you have specific things that are, you know, different in each, each district within the state. Sevens and thirteens begin with the filing of what's called a bankruptcy petition. And that's essentially just uh, sta- standardized federal forms that spell out the debtor's information all of the assets you have, all of the liabilities that you have, uh, your income, your expenses. Uh, One of the components of the 2005 law is what's called the means test. And it's basically just a process by which to determine if you're eligible to even, even file for a chapter seven bankruptcy, depending upon the income that you make. So there's forms related to the means test. There's the listing of creditors to make sure they get notice, uh, there's a form that indicates your social security number you know, verify that's correct with all of these forms each form contains information plus it contains you know laws specifically govern that form as far as disclosures and things such as that nature 
So the answer to if you need a lawyer is that you, you, you don't. There's no requirement to have a lawyer, but because of those intricacies to the forms and the law and how it may apply to your creditors um, and your assets that you have, um, it is highly suggested that you speak to someone that, that practices in this area of the law. And I, I would take that a step further and say that you speak to someone that really only practices in this area. I mean, I tell clients all the time that, you know, you're, you're welcome to go talk to somebody else and they practice 10 different types of law. And I, I just tell them straight out of the gate, I'm not smart enough to practice 10 different types of law. I, I mean, I'm focusing on bankruptcy. Be good at that. Well, uh, bankruptcy eliminate all my debts? Depending upon what type of debts that you have, um, it will eliminate those um, debts, unsecured, again, credit cards, medical bills, those kind of things. But there are some specific things under the bankruptcy code that are excluded. And always a good way to think about those are if they're really attached to the federal government in any way, there's a good chance they are excluded. Um, they're obviously, they take care of their own when they create federal legislation. So student loans, taxes, um, things like domestic support obligations, like child support, um, alimony, those types of things are usually non-dischargeable, meaning that those are debts that will not be eliminated. They're going to just kind of pass through the bankruptcy process. Secured debts such as cars and mortgages, where there is some type of security interest, those are dischargeable as well unless you execute something within the bankruptcy process, which is called a reaffirmation agreement. Essentially just saying, I know these are included, I know they'll be discharged, but I'm going to promise to pay them anyway. And the reaffirmation agreement kind of takes those out of the bankruptcy and makes them not as chargeable. Uh, I mean, they've passed through, they weren't discharged because you reaffirmed them. So not all debts are dischargeable, but most of the people that file have the unsecured debts, credit cards, medical bills, those kind of things. Those are. Will it stop the collection calls? It will. That is one component of the bankruptcy code that, is pretty much certain in all kinds of debt that you have, that uh, there's, there's a mechanism in the code which is referred to as the automatic stay. So immediately upon filing a case, the automatic stay kicks in, it is immediate, and it requires creditors to cease uh, collection attempts with the person that has filed, so phone calls, lawsuits, Lawsuits that have gone to judgment, and now there's garnishments associated with those. those. Those things have to stop by operation of the bankruptcy code immediately. No questions asked. Now, some of those things might be that you're getting collection calls on might be, you know, in the long run, non-dischargeable. But the collection aspect of that has to stop. And it's, it's an ability for someone to, to gain some breathing room and just kind of figure out what options are available and what's their next step need to be. And, um, you know, without the, the fear and apprehension of answering the phone when it rings. As we record this podcast, we're a couple months into the COVID-19 crisis. So that brings me to my final question. And that is, are you open uh, during COVID-19? Uh, how do we reach you? How do we meet with you? We are probably when the bankruptcy court made the full determination to, to stop accepting stamped and filed petition to the clerk's office and everything went paperless. We made, a, made an immediate turn to be completely paperless. And so over the years, we've kind of built on that philosophy uh, as far as being paperless with more systems to to manage uh, our caseload online, um, to follow up with the, uh, new people that have called the office uh, on a more automated basis, 
allow more access to their files within these systems and essentially move everything off of antiquated hard drives to, to cloud-based online system. Kind of the last step in that was the ability to work much more from home and kind of keep the practice practice going, whether I be at home or my assistant is at home, we, we can access pretty much everything that we have uh, virtually. I told several clients I've called and been surprised that the, that we are open and the bankruptcy court is open. Is that you know this is this is a time when as a bankruptcy lawyer, people may need you more than ever at this point. So we we just kind of have to be open and available when those people call. Well, James, thanks. This has been uh, valuable uh, information, especially right now, and I appreciate you uh, being on Ask sure. the Expert today. I appreciate you you having me. Thanks for listening to Ask the Expert with Steve Sleeper. Join us next time as entrepreneurs and professionals share their intriguing stories of success and service.